Joined now by Alex Newman, our international correspondent. Alex, good to see you again. It's great to be with you. Thank you so much, Duke. So finally, we don't have a gloom and doom report. And actually, it's kind of good news. The uh, progressive left is having a conniption as more conservatives and, and more people in general say enough with public schools. They are abandoning reform. They're just cho choosing other options. Uh, let's talk about this good news. Yeah, this is phenomenal news. And, you know, years ago, as we were strategizing about this, we always knew the day would come when enough children were leaving the system that the fake media and the education establishment would have a freak out and they'd frantically look around and say, who's done this? We need to demonize them. We need to call them bad names. Uh, and, and that day has now arrived, uh, which is you know perfectly part of our plan. That's how we're planning to reach the uh, the 50 percent of people who are still stuck in this you know fake media bubble. Um, so very good. But, uh, you know, it started a couple weeks ago. New Republic put out an article saying, oh, my goodness, the, the conservatives are moving away from the bipartisan consensus that we just need to reform the schools. And now they're trying to destabilize and undermine public education completely. Boo-hoo, cry me a river. Uh, then uh, Randy Weingarten, the head of the uh, American Federation of Teachers, tweeted out uh, some uh, crying whining about, oh, my goodness, conservatives are, are abandoning public school reform and they're moving toward uh, exiting and, and abandoning the public schools. And just in the last few days, amazing things have been happening. Uh, Candace Owens went on uh, Fox News and said, we, we need to get the children out of the public schools. Uh, so things are happening very quickly. The left is starting to freak out. Uh, but this is good. I mean, it, the, the discussion is no longer how do we fix the public schools? The discussion now is, are they fixable? Should we bother or should we just leave? And so we're making great progress. We've got the momentum uh, on our side, the wind in our sails. And, uh, you know, the New York Slimes is getting ready to drop a big hit piece on us uh, very soon. So exciting times, Duke. Yeah, when the New York Times figures you're worth coming after, it means you really sticking it to them. I want to give a shout out here to Public School Exit. You and I are a member of that uh, board, uh, Alex. I want to give out a shout out to Ray Moore's Exodus Mandate. I want to give all the people who are involved with Freedom Project a big shout out because we've all been pushing this direction for a long time and it's, be it's beginning to take hold. We've got a number of other agencies in Public School Exit that are part of that that are also doing incredible work. I'm thinking of, of uh, Dran's work as well, Dran Reese's work. And so this has been a, a really a, a lot of people pulling together. You think of the, the women at USPIE. So this is beginning to take uh, root and I think that's a powerful thing. Congratulations to all of us who have been doing this and all of you who have been doing this as well, moms and dads. So uh, Alex, but let's go a little bit further here. So what, 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 what change do you think all of a sudden? I mean, obviously there are some uh, really highlights of this critical race theory, all the sexuality, but what went, what in, in the minds of many conservatives, what finally went from reforming public schools to actually pulling out from them? Well, you know, I think the events of the last few weeks ha have really shifted the discussion. You know, moms and dads, uh, they're, they're going, you know, they're freaking out about their kids being brainwashed, that they might have been born in the wrong body, that they need hormones, that, you know, they're racist or they're oppressors because how much melanin content they have in their skin. So they thought, hey, uh, let's go to the school board and, and, you know, let's make our voices heard. And that's going to fix the problem. Uh, and then not only did that not fix the problem, the FBI is now being sicked on them. And so now people are like, all right, you know what? This, this is absolutely ridiculous. We're out. Uh, so, you know, I, I think, honestly, the, the government education establishment has brought this on themselves. They've done this to themselves. Uh, certainly our efforts contributed to this. But, uh, you know, it's, it's just amazing how they thought that people would continue to put up with this abuse indefinitely. Uh, some will, you know, some, you know, a free babysitter. I don't really care what you teach my kids. So, you know, there, there will be kids who will stay trapped in there uh, indefinitely. And they know that. They know they've got a captive audience. But uh, they, they've just gone too far. The, the insanity is too extreme. Uh, the outrage outrageous indoctrination has gotten too much and uh, and people are just ha having enough of it so uh praise god this is wonderful wonderful news and i, I want to echo what you said i mean there's so many people who deserve uh some of the credit here and honestly i think we're just in the beginning of this duke i think we're heading into uh, a fundamentally different discussion about education and public education than we've had in my lifetime certainly yeah mine too and i'm older than you uh, so <laughs> that's i've suffered longer uh, but i would also say you know <laughs> as is the usually the case and what's going to happen here with everything that progressives do every idiot scheme of the progressives when it comes to education ends up 
turning around and biting minority and inner city kids in the butt. They are the ones who are gonna be less able, particularly inner city kids, to find alternatives to the public schools. They don't and oftentimes have the funds to be able to pursue private schools. So once again, not only did the public, the, these educrats, these progressives ruin public school, they actually made it worse for the minority constituents for which they say they're doing it all in the first place. After the break, let's talk a little bit more, uh, more about the consequences of what's happening with people fleeing the public Public schools. Back again with Alex Newman, our international correspondent. And we're talking about the uh, uh, the exodus, if I can borrow Ray Moore's term. The exodus. We're starting to see people uh, painting crosses on their doors in blood and leaving these stupid public schools behind. Uh, let's talk more about this exodus. Let's talk more about uh, the reasons for it. Now, obviously critical race theory with, uh, was a huge problem. I mean, we think about how long you and I fought Common Core and we really didn't move the needle and we, very got, we got a lot of grandmas and grandpas coming out, but we didn't get a lot of moms and dads. It was almost largely a, a white soccer mom movement. This is different. We have a hugely diverse uh, members of, of the American public, African Americans, Hispanic Americans, Asian Americans, uh, moms and dads, all of different stripes and if different backgrounds are really pushing hard against this racist garbage in the classroom. And I think perhaps even slightly bigger than the racial bullying in the classrooms, this out of control LGBTQ garbage, this nonsense, this forcing children as young as five years old to believe in uh, mixed genders. And most alarmingly, what we just saw of Loudoun Virginia, where a huge, one of the most disgustingly progressive school districts, who's had been the, the center of this media attention for critical race theory and sexualization. Now we have Loudon, who has covered up one and possibly two rapes of a so-called transgender boy who went into girls' bathrooms and in one case raped and perhaps sodomized a young girl, which was a covered, which covered up by the, the, uh, the administration of these disgusting Loudon schools. Yeah, and then and then add insult to injury when the dad went to the school board to speak out about his little daughter being raped by a transgender in the girl's bathroom. Uh, they had him arrested for disorderly conduct. Can you imagine the the gall, the nerve, the chutzpah of these little tyrants? And and I think you know this is going to come back to haunt them. They can pretend like they're going to sick the FBI on parents. They can call in Homeland Security. They can call in, uh, you know, the dementia patient currently occupying the White House. But, uh, you know, that's not going to change this. Uh, the, the exodus has started. It's not going to go back. And, you know, and, and black Americans, interestingly, uh, if you look at the, the explosion in homeschool data, depending on whose data you look at, we've seen at least a doubling uh, just over the last year or so. There's some some uh, numbers show 300 percent increase. But the largest increase actually came from the black community. Uh, they went from something like 3% of black children being homeschooled to now I think over 16% is the data that the Census Bureau came up with. So across all demographics, all income groups, all ethnic groups, whatever, uh, there is a, a growing understanding that it's time to get out of here. And things like what we just saw in Loudoun County, things like what we've seen with CRT, uh, you know, it's just it's just pushing people over the edge. And then people, I think, naively thought that you could reform this, that if we just go uh, talk to the school board, they'll come to their senses. Maybe they didn't know this was going on. And uh, to be met with this kind of nasty bullying, intimidation and, and really terrorism. Right. When you use violence and the threat of violence for political goals, like the National Association of School Boards is asking the governments to do here, uh, you are officially terrorizing parents. And this is going to blow up in their face. Uh, I, I think they're going to get defunded in by school boards and state school boards across the country. They're going to lose more and more kids. And Duke, uh, what's going to happen here? You know, th this trillion plus dollar a year system depends on a constant stream of new minds to poison and taxpayer dollars. And as they get less and less minds, they're going to get less and less taxpayer dollars. Uh, prepare for something earth shattering when it comes to education. The, these institutions are not going to have the money to keep up with these palatial buildings and all these bonds that they've floated. Uh, they're going to be in big financial trouble here. And that's good news. Well, don't underestimate the power of progressives and Sleepy Joe to do a public school <laughs> mandate, right? To, to, to 
argue that public school is so essential to our freedoms and our democracy that only public schools can be the, the, the schools our kids go to. Don't, don't, don't rule that out. They're not gonna, they, they, will, they will try to force kids into public schools before they actually change what they're doing. And this also highlights one other thing, Alex. The center of left-wing ideology, the center of racism and white privilege and white supremacist in this, in this country is exactly with the progressive party, the educrats, the radical lefties. They are the ones who have racialized our classrooms. They are the ones who've used race to stigmatize certain kids. They are the ones who are practicing segregation in our schools. They're the ones. What's left of racism in this country comes from the radical left, the very people who control education. And it's only fit that minorities, as you just pointed out, run away from the plantation. That's really good news as well. Amen. Yes, it is, Duke. It's an exciting time to be alive. Uh, and I think we're going to see a lot more good news on the education front in the years to come. Hey team, most of you know our shows have been censored by Facebook and YouTube for years, which makes it very hard to keep up with the cost of production. But thanks to our Patriot Club members, we have not only been able to keep things going, but to add more programming. We're doing 18 new shows a week, 18. In fact, we've got big plans in motion for our viewers, especially our Patriot Club members. So please consider supporting our freedom-loving media by joining the Patriot Club this year. For a $99 tax-deductible donation, we will send you our 20-ounce stainless steel navy blue tumbler etched with the words American Patriot, standing atop the shoulders of a rather fit-looking George Washington. And for $129 gift, we'll also include a 15-ounce stainless steel mug as a token of our appreciation. All you have to do is visit patriotclub.us and become a Patriot Club member today. That's patriotclub.us. Thank you and God bless.